Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Kasaya, this is Saya Swag, and I have the Perla bag from Shambhala to sew up with you guys today. I had a live video last week of me cutting it out, and this week we're gonna sew this little cutie up. Look at this. Ah! It is a bigger size bag. For some reason, when I got the pattern, I thought it was gonna be like a small little thing, but it's actually a pretty big size. I do think this would be adorable size down a bit too. If you wanted to make it like at a 70%, I think it would be just the cutest little bag as well. Just an idea. Okay, so this is what we are doing today. I absolutely love this bag. As always, her patterns came together. It comes together so easily. Her instructions are amazing. Her pattern pieces fit right together. No struggling at all with this bag. I used all Indo Love Creation vinyls. This is her new Nuva, I think is what it's called, vinyl. It's like a basket weave. It's super cool. It's soft. It sews up perfectly. I love it so much. This is her faux suede. This is her faux Kaya leather collection. And then this cotton print that I'm using, this cute Star Wars. I've had for like, I want to say like maybe two years. And I'm pretty sure it's a print I got from Spoonflower a long time ago, guys. I don't know if they still offer it. And then my inside is my favorite canvas from Fabric Therapy, again, because I can't get enough of these stripes. So we're just gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> um, okay, so as you can see, I did some faux piping. It's not real piping. All I did was fold a one inch strip of this faux suede, and then I sewed it along my edges just like you would regular piping. I love it, it adds a pop of color. You do not have to do the piping. You can leave it out if you want. Um, I did these side connectors. I sell these ones on my website and they're just prong connectors. So they just have two prongs, super easy to install. I think they look so cute on this bag. Um, so those are the connectors I used. I did a flip lock like she has in the pattern. I used the exact placements that she suggested. It all came out beautifully. Uh, I did interface all of my outside pieces with Decaville light. I really suggest it. I think it turned out really good with the Decaville light. Um, it wasn't harder to do with that. So I would recommend that. And then it's got that flip lock and it has a magnetic snap here, which is kind of cool. So it really does keep all of your stuff secure. It's got a flip pocket or not flip pocket a slip pocket in the front. And then inside, I just added one zipper pocket along the back. You could do a slip pocket um, on the other side as well if you want to, it's up to you. What else? I do think this is like a um, somewhat of a experienced beginner pattern. It, there's nothing that's really too difficult on this bag especially if you're really starting to get into sewing these gussets, this is a great one to try. It fits very nicely. I didn't struggle with it at all. Yeah. Um, let me know if you guys have any comments or questions. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'd really appreciate it. And what else? All the links to purchase everything are always down in my description under all my videos. So if you're like, where did she get that? Just go look. I should have it all listed underneath. All right, let's start making this adorable Perla bag from Shambhala. Okay, let's go over our pieces for the Perla. I did a cutting, live cutting um, video of this on my channel. So you can kind of see in depth how I cut it out. Um, but I will quickly go over our pattern pieces as well in case you missed that. All right, so hopefully I've got these all right. This is the first time I'm going through this pattern. So if I mess up a couple pieces, that's why hopefully I've understood this correctly. Okay, so for this 
back main panel piece. It's also your lining piece, all right? So you should have one main back panel piece and two lining pieces. Now I'm using vinyl, waterproof canvas, and just a little bit of cotton. Um, all my cotton I interfaced with a woven, and then I am backing my vinyl with some Decaville light out of the seam allowances. It may make it pretty stiff, but I think I want this bag to have good shape. So I think it'll be okay. I've probably already told you in the beginning. <laughs> um, okay, so I have three of those. And then I have another stabilizer for my front piece all um, cut out because it is pieced together. So I have to sew it together before I can add this stabilizer. So I have this ready to go as well. And I have my um, heat press heating up so I can do that as I'm going. All right, and then I have my flap panel pieces. It's a mirrored piece, okay? So you should have two pieces, front and back. There are two pattern pieces for it. It's basically mirrored. Um, there are placements for snaps on it, so it's important to print out the pieces. And then you have your flap contrast piece. All right, so three of those. And then I did put some Decaville light on my flap. Um, you could do fleece if you want to, we'll see. Again, I don't know if this is gonna be too much or just right. I have my four gusset pieces. I have two lining and two exterior. Again, deck of the light out of my seam allowances. Um, she does have strap connectors, a certain kind of strap connector in um, the picture on hers. I am using these strap connectors I saw on my website. They're pretty cute. And they are connected with just prongs, okay? So we will be putting that on our side gusset pieces, okay? Just like that, see the prongs? That's what I'm doing for my connectors. So we'll see how that goes. And then I will have to make sure and back those connectors, probably with some Decaville Heavy. Um, the gusset already has Decaville Light, but I want to make sure that it is definitely interfaced correctly so those hold up. All right, so I have my exterior pocket part one. Okay, this is my exterior fabric. Again, it's just a cotton with some woven on the back. You should have one of that. I have my exterior main panel side piece. And then my exterior main panel top. And then my exterior main panel bottom, which is going to be the pocket piece on it. So I do have two of those cut out, um, one each, and they are mirrored. And I just noticed that one is shorter than the other. So I do need to trim one down. This one is shorter than this one. I'm gonna have to trim that down. Uh, okay, and then I am doing one inside pocket. So one pocket piece. I am doing a little bit of piping on it. Again, I like to just use um, faux leather, faux suede, vinyl. I did a one inch strip. I folded it in half and I basted it together to kind of make my faux piping. So I am going to do that on the bag. And then I do have my cross body strap already done. It was the width of the vinyl, or sorry, the length of the vinyl which is usually 54 um, inches by four. It's a one inch strap, okay? And I have my slider and everything all already assembled on it. And then for hardware, you will need one zip and a pull for the inside zipper pocket. I have my two strap connectors that we're doing. I have a flip lock for the flap. And I also, she has a magnetic snap and a flip lock for that flap. So I have those two pieces and I have my nameplate. I think that's it. All right, let's start sewing this up. First thing we're gonna do is work on our flap. So I have my flap accent piece here. I have the markings that's on the pattern piece. There's a line and that's where we're gonna fold this down. We want this to have a finished edge right now. So I put tape along the top and I'm just folding that down. So it's like a 1 4th inch fold. It's not very much, okay? And I'm going to fold that down, okay? So it's 
got a finished edge there. And then I am going to place it onto my flap and line it up as best I can here. And I'm just gonna clip it in place while I top stitch that on. Just a minute, I moved a tiny bit. There we go. I just want that to stay in place. All right. Now I'm going to top stitch along this accent piece here. All right. Once that accent piece is added on, you can trim the extra of this flap out of the back. All right, you don't need this part anymore. So I'm gonna just trim that off. All right, and that is my flap. Very cute, all right. Set that aside. We want to put our snap onto the other flap, our male snap. Okay. And I already have the placement for that marked out right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my snap. Don't really, I could put something behind it, but it's got this Decaville, so it should be fine. I will put a piece of tape over it to protect the prongs though. Just like that. All right, so there's my snap. Next, you want to glue these two pieces together. If, put your interfacing on if you haven't yet. I already have mine on. Um, next, you want to glue these two pieces together, wrong sides together, so your right sides are out. You're gonna have your raw edges, and we are going to top stitch along the edge of our flap all the way around. Now, your inside flap should be a little bit shorter than your um, exterior, like facing out flap, okay? So that is correct. I am going to just do some spray glue on here and glue these two together. I just put some like cardboard down when I do this. Um, again, you don't have to use spray glue, that's just what I'm doing. But I put some cardboard down and then I'm gonna spray it and then put the two together. All right. Maybe clean off my nozzle. And I'm just using Gorilla Spray. There's so many different glues, glue sprays you could use. Let's do a good layer. It's probably good. <laughs> Want to make sure there's no glue on my fingers. Okay. And then just stick the two layers together. And carefully move it because I don't want it to get in the glue. Looks good. Press it. You could always probably just do some like double-sided tape all in there if you wanted to. 
Um, but if you do the glue, it helps the two layers just stay together the whole time your bag is made. So, okay, we're gonna go top stitch this. Okay, so after that's top stitch, you wanna trim around about an eighth of an inch off of it just to give a nice even edge. Now, directions are different if you are doing a cotton flap. You won't be doing it this way. You'll be turning it and not sewing it as a raw edge. This is just for um, people who are doing vinyl or you know, the faux leather or leather like I am. So now I'm just going to carefully and evenly as I can trim it down. If I wanted to, I could edge coat and edge paint this flap and that would look very nice if you wanted to do that. I had thought about doing it. But for time's sake, I don't think I'm going to. Okay, that looks good. It's all nice and even, front and back. Let's continue. So you wanna put some double-sided tape along this top flap part that's hanging over and just fold it down. So you have a finished edge up top. Okay, so fold that down. So it's nice and finished. And then we need to add our um, part of our flip lock, okay? So I do have mine kind of marked out. I don't know if it's visible. I have it marked out there. There's a marking on the pattern piece as for where you need to place it. Um, I have my little punch die here that kind of fits my lock perfectly and my press. If you don't have these tools, you can just use scissors and a hole punch. 
and those do a great job as well. So I'm just kind of lining it up here in the light so I can see what I'm doing. Right there. Okay. Is my spot that I need. So you should have two screws, a front and a back for this piece. So this is my front side here. Okay, so I want to put that one here and it fits pretty dang nice right in there. And then I will attach the back with the screws. Put the plate on and then put the screws on. The right tools for the job really do make a difference. Um, a press, if you're really getting into making bags and wallets, some kind of press is definitely worth the investment. It saves you lots of time and headache and measuring and cutting and it's an amazing tool. Make sure that's nice and tight. All right, so there is my female part of my flip lock, and we will move on. We're going to start assembling our slip pocket front, whole front panel. So I'm going to take my exterior main panel top and my exterior main panel bottom, and I'm going to connect those two and sew those together. So I'm going to flip them right sides together. I'm going to sew those at my seam allowance. Okay. And I'm going to turn the seam allowance towards the bottom piece here. So my seam allowance is going down and I am going to top stitch that. So I have that piece there. I'm gonna put that aside I'm going to grab, what is this one called? Exterior pocket piece. It's the one that has this weird shape. Uh, yeah, exterior, poc exterior pocket. Now, this one is the one that we are putting the other part of our flip lock, and you can put your logo on this too. So I put a layer of Decaville on this piece, Decaville Light. You definitely need to back that if you just have cotton like I do. So I'm gonna go ahead and we are going to add our flip lock piece here. Now I wanna make sure I know which slots we're going in here because I think this one's different. The middle two? Nope. Yeah, okay. So this one's weird. It's like this line and not quite this other one here. So I need to center it. So normally, just a minute. So I'm gonna mark it out like this so I can actually see what I'm doing here.
that is my center. And let's see how far apart these two are. About one and an eighth, which means half of that is just a little more than a, than a half inch. So I'm gonna say it's about right here is where I want. Let's see if that lines up right. That should be right in the middle there and there oof yep got it all right so however you need to figure it out figure out where your placement is on this and that is mine right there you know what i'm gonna put some fray check on it too Just so that does not go anywhere. Maybe. I haven't used my fray check in a while. So used to using vinyl on everything. Alright. Let's just put a little dot there. And a little dot there. Okay. That makes me feel better. you cover that all right there is my flip lock hopefully it lines up in the end with my other piece I'm always worried about that when I add it ahead of time and then I'm gonna go ahead and add my name um, my name tag as well while I am here. Ooh, which washer was it? Are they the same? They're the same. All right. Again, I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of fray check on it since it's cotton. I don't always remember to do that, but and this time. Come on. I am going to fold my prongs in like I did with this one, because I'm afraid if I fold it out, it will get in the way of my seam allowance there. So I'm just gonna fold that in. All right. All set with those pieces. There goes my iron. Okay. We want the lining pocket. And we're going to add it to this piece that we just put together. Okay, up at the top. Line that up. And we're going to sew that together. Right sides together. Here we go. You're going to flip your seam allowance going up towards that pocket up here. 
If your seam allowance is going this way, you're going to be top stitching along this piece. So you're going to fold it in half. Uh -oh, didn't mean to slam that down. You're going to fold it in half. Okay. Wrong sides together. And I'm just going to kind of clip it there. And that's what we have now. All right. And then we're going to do two rows of stitching on this piece right here, it looks like. Okay, top stitch on the top of our fold here. And then I'm gonna do another row, pretty much just for decorative pur purposes, I think. Now we're gonna add our two pieces together. So we're gonna take this piece that we did before and we're going to add this piece to it. Super cute. All right, and I'm just clipping all my layers together here. And then we will baste this all together and then add the other side the other half of our front panel. All right, here we go. Now, if you were to do this all vinyl, it would get pretty thick. Um, well, maybe not. Just make sure your inside pieces are cotton or a lighter material, but you could do this piece vinyl and this piece vinyl. Yeah, anyways, I was just thinking it through there. Okay, so now take your exterior main panel side and we are going to attach it to this piece. Line it up, right sides together, and sew down the side. And then I am going to have to, instead of doing a heat press, I'm going to take it to my iron to attach the Decaville because I can't really heat press once my hardware is on, but I can iron. So I will iron my Decaville light piece onto it after this is done uh, being put together. Okay, I'm gonna press my seam allowance going towards this side panel here and top stitch that. Cute. Okay, so there is my front panel piece. I'm gonna go add my Decaville very carefully with an iron, and then we will continue. 
my Decaville's kind of, um, kind of, it is. My Decaville light is fused onto my panel. I'm going to add the other part of my magnetic snap. And then we will put on our piping. Now you don't have to do piping. That is an option. You can make this bag without it. Um, if you're making it without it, then I would suggest fast forwarding the next few minutes while I show you how to do piping. added. All right, so the way I'm doing my piping is, as I explained before, with just a folded over piece of vinyl. It's one inch wide. I folded it in half and basted it together so it doesn't have any actual cording or anything in the middle of it, but it gives that little pop of color and that feel of piping. So I'm going to start right here. I do have a mark on where to ease off and on my piping because you don't want it to go all the way up to the top. We're going to kind of ease it in on both sides. So I start a little bit down and I am going to just start clipping it on. And I will be doing some notches in it around these curves. If you don't put notches and stretch it, it won't lay correctly when you Go to put your bag together it just it has wrinkles and it looks all funky so be sure and cut some just eighth of an inch notches here because you kind of need to stretch it along the curve hopefully that makes sense so we're going to start stretching here i kind of pull it as i go and stretch it along that curve And it's not a big major curve, but you definitely need to do that. All right, and then not so much down here. You can just leave it normal down here. And then I'll need to do it back up this way. And then I will just baste this piping on and then I'll do the same thing to the back panel because I want it on both sides. clip it all the way to the top because again I have a marking right there of where I'm going to ease off the piping all right okay so we're going to baste this on and then we'll do the back piece
Okay, so that's how it should look. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and repeat the same process for my back panel. We now need to attach our flap to our back piece. So there's um, markings on the pattern piece of how far down to put the flap. I have found my center on here and I gently marked my center on my flap. And then I'm gonna put one more piece of double-sided tape along the back here. I'm gonna have to pay attention to the stickiness of my needle when I am sewing this, because I will be sewing through some double-sided tape. If you don't feel like you need to tape this in place, then you don't have to, but I definitely want to. All right, so you want to put it on going this way, because it's going over and onto the front of your bag. So that is my center, and that is on my line right there. I'm going to get an alcohol pad wipe um, and put a little oil on it and put it on my needle. And that should help with the double-sided tape. That'll make it sticky. So I'm just going to wipe my needle real good. All right, let me thread this real quick. All right, I'm gonna do two rows of top stitching on that flap. And then I will put a couple of rivets in it. All right, here we go. my first row. My needle seems to be doing okay. I'm going to wipe it one more time. Okay. And now I'm going to do my second row. And I think I just do it... Yep, right next to it. Here we go. Now, if you want to, you can put a couple of rivets. I would suggest, you know, trying to get in between your stitching on those two rows if you can, right here and right here. Mine's pretty close together. I don't know if I can get between those two lines now that I'm looking at it. It may cut my thread, so I'm not gonna do any rivets. Make sure you give yourself enough room between the two rows of stitching to add the rivets. All right, on to the next step. We're going to work on our gusset pieces. Um, I have my connectors here. Now they're kind of wide 
right here and I am afraid if I install them before I sew my gusset to my front and back pieces that it will interfere with my seam allowance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the markings and the cuts for my connectors right now and then after I sew this to my front and back panels, I will install my connectors. So I'm just doing the cuts right now for my connectors, okay? So I have my markings on where I want the center of my connectors to go. And then I have my washer here, and this is from here down, this is going to be my middle point of my washer. I kind of marked that all out because I am cutting this first one and the second to the last one, all right? That is the markings for this one. So I'm gonna line that middle line up with that dot there and get that on there as straight as I can. That looks good. So I'm just going to add my marks, cut my marks there. And there, I am going to just make sure that that is correct real quick. And I will be putting a piece of Decaville Heavy behind here as well. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. See how I'm just afraid it'll get in the middle of my seam allowance. It's just gonna fit on my gusset piece. So I'm just putting the markings. All right. And then I will cut a couple pieces of Decaville as well to go with it. Just so we have those all in place. cut. Oh, that one looks fine. All right. So those are my pieces. I'm going to do my other gusset piece real quick. You know, I'm going to do one other thing just to make sure I'm getting this centered. I should have done this. I should draw a center line as well. I'm going to do that real fast. It'll just help me get it straight. All right, here we go. All right, so I have my markings. Let's put these gusset pieces together. So go ahead and take your gusset pieces right sides together. Your seam allowance is just a little bit different, so pay attention to the pattern on that. And we are going to sew these two pieces. We're going to open that up and flatten the seam and we are going to sew down each side of that. Top stitch down each side.
Beautiful. All right. Now we are going to add the gusset to our pieces here. So I want to make sure that my center is marked along the bottom here. Which I think I'm gonna do, instead of clipping, I'm going to mark it. Okay, that is my center. We are now going to clip this all on. So right sides together. I like to line up the center first down here. And we are going to clip that. And then I will do the top here. down and you probably are going to have to put some snips into your gusset to get it to lay nice I don't know I don't think I'm going to have to actually looks like it's going to be just fine without it all right, and then repeat for this side. Beautiful. Okay. So we are going to go ahead and sew that on.
Okay, so that's the first part. I'm just gonna turn it so you can see what that piping looks like. It's really cute. So that's what that faux piping, it's just folded, folded vinyl along there. Look at that cute little pop it adds. All right, so that's our first half. We're gonna go ahead and do the same exact steps and add the back panel on. Okay, so before I go any farther, I'm gonna add my connectors real quick before I forget. We're just gonna do that. All right, there's one connector. Do the other one. All right, and then we're gonna turn this right side out and see what we got. Okay, oh, that's cute. Look at that little guy. All right. And then this. Super cute. Oh, I love these connectors on it. Okay, look at that. All right, let's head to the inside of the bag. 
I'm gonna work on the inside lining pieces now. I decided to do a two um, piece zipper pocket because I am going to leave the bottom of the zipper pocket opened and I had directional print, so I wanted the directional print to go the right way in my pocket, so I cut two pieces. Um, I'll probably be trimming it up quite a bit and making it shorter. I'll just kind of see what it needs when I get there. Um, I am also leaving a hole in the lining to turn the bag. I will leave a really big sized hole in the lining, turn the bag, and then I'll pull the lining through the pocket, sew up the lining, and then I'll sew up the pocket. Um, when I can do that on bags, I like to do that and leave the lining finished nicely and hide that seam inside of my pocket. Okay, so I've got my markings. I've lined it up. I'm going to sew on my zipper pocket. Okay, I'm gonna put my cuts in that. Just like that on the corner. Turn this pocket through. I'm just going to take this to my iron and carefully give it a press here, and then we will finish our pocket. I have this all ironed. I'm going to put my zipper in. I want my zipper going from left to right. I'm gonna take the bottom tape off first and then I'll do the top. Sew that on.
All right, got my zipper sewn in there. <clears throat> I'm going to be putting the backing on. Now I do need to trim this down a little bit because this is too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna trim it about there, I think. All right, perfect. And then I'm gonna take this one, make sure my directional print is going the right way. I'm gonna put it on top. I'm just gonna sew my top first on, and then I will trim this one up as well. And then I want to be folding this up because I am going to leave my pocket open. You don't have to do this. You can just pull through your lining if you want. It's up to you. This is totally optional and just whatever your preference is. And you can iron this if you want. I'm just finger pressing. All right, and then I'm gonna sew my sides up, but not my bottom. going to trim this up right here. I don't need that much extra zipper hanging off and same with this. And then I will melt the ends of my zippers. All right, and that is my pocket. I'm not doing anything on the other side. I'm not doing a slip pocket or anything. I'm just doing a zip pocket. And now we are going to put the rest of the lining together, just like we did the outside of the bag. The only thing that's gonna change is that we're going to leave a hole in our lining on one side, and we're going to increase our seam allowance around the panels of the bag. So the gusset is sewn the same way. I think I'm going to increase my seam allowance on the gusset just a tiny bit because I feel like the gusset on the exterior could have been a little bit tighter. So I am just gonna do that. And then sew that flat. To install it. So I have my center clipped down here, so we're good to go. And now I'm just going to clip my gusset onto my lining.
And I think for my um, lining gusset, I do need to put some clips in my gusset for this. Especially because we're increasing our seam allowance around here and it'll just fit better. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to start at our normal seam allowance up here at the top. And then as I get down a couple inches, I'm going to increase it and make it a bigger seam allowance all the way back till I get about right here. And then I'll go back to that smaller seam allowance. And that will ensure that our lining is snug inside our exterior and isn't baggy. I'm gonna go ahead and trim down my seam allowance a little bit as well on this side. All right, now I'm going to repeat for the other side, the only thing I am changing is I am leaving a hole in the lining. Quite a big hole. So I don't struggle pulling my bag through because I did use that Decaville light. So it will be pretty stiff. All right, here we go.
Now we're gonna add the two together. All right, so I'm gonna put my exterior inside my lining, right sides together. And I am gonna have to squish it. And then just start lining the whole top up. Start with your sides and then I'll go to my centers and we'll go from there. Okay, we're gonna sew this all together.
all sewn. Okay, I am going to pull it through this hole here. Should be pretty easy. Very nice, okay. And then we're gonna tuck this in. And we want to top stitch this. I could close up my lining for it. I think I'm gonna top stitch first. We're just gonna top stitch this. Um, it may be a little tricky and I think I'm going to top stitch from the inside of the bag just because it's a smaller opening and I don't have a cylinder arm machine, so it's a little bit harder on a flatbed. So I will be doing it from the inside of the bag and I'm just clipping it all into place where I want it to lay as I sew it. I don't know, maybe it's big enough I can top stitch from the outside. I'll get it under my machine and see. <laughs> we'll see about that. I am gonna need some help over these side seams. Use some kind of folded up piece of vinyl or hump jumper to get you over those side seams. But other than that, it's pretty, pretty thin. Okay, let's try top stitching this. I think I can do it this way.
all top stitched. Good to go. All right, so now I want to open my zipper pocket here. I'm gonna pull my zipper pocket out and then I'm going to grab my lining through my zipper pocket to close that up. I'm gonna stick that back in and then I'll sew up my pocket. And then we're done. I'll attach my crossbody strap and that is it. All right, so let's sew this pocket up. dog laying on the floor. <gasps> Oakley, say hi. Oakley, what are you doing down there? Why are you waiting for mommy to play with you? <laughs> She's been bringing me a ball wanting me to play and I'm in the middle of recording. Oh, you have thread stuck on your face. Okay, sorry. Anyway, <laughs> distraction, those animals. All right, yay, uh, we are done. Uh, look how adorable that turned out. Freaking love it. All right, let's see if everything lines up. That looks good. Ah, oh, that totally lines up. And then all is left to do, attach the crossbody strap. I love these connectors on this bag. These are perfect. I do sell these connectors on my website. They come in packs of four. Hey, look at that. That is adorable. 
Yay! All done. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Go make this adorable bag. I seriously love the piecing of this pattern. I feel like it is such a cute, look at that. I love it. <laughs> like and subscribe if you haven't already. Please let me know if you have any questions or comments. And thank you guys for watching.